So say you've been stoned every second since 420, or for the past year, or for the past decade, or since you were 15. Ever wonder how it's affected your health? Hypothetically, right? No, 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 I'm referring to you specifically now. Fine, get it out of your system. Thank you, I appreciate that. Uh, so ever wonder what the health implications are of smoking that much weed? Find out on today's episode. I'm Alex. I'm Xander. And welcome to the Science of Sin where we explain why you're so good at being bad. Now here are the two sides to the health risks of cannabis that you've probably heard of. There's the just say no authority figure side. You think weed is safe, huh? Well, why don't you tell that to little Billy? He smoked the marijuana and guess what? He dropped out of school, got addicted to heroin, now he's living at the bus station, taking up the bus from strangers just to feed a smack habit. Is that what you want, huh? Huh, you get rammed up the poop chute just so you can get high? Is that what you want? Is that what you want? And then there's the everything's better on weed hippie mentality. Dude, oh man, no. Marijuana, it's like God's medicine, man. Totally natural. I used to have cancer, glaucoma, eating disorder. Totally cured, man. Man, I'm the healthiest I've ever been with no side effects. <laughs> well, the truth is, it's neither. Just like most things that are fun, too much has some health risks, but it's probably not as bad as you've been told, especially compared to some other drugs. Okay, hit me with some truth. First, your lungs. While there's lots of bad things in marijuana smoke that cause cancer, acetaldehyde, ammonia, there's no evidence actually linking smoking weed to getting cancer. In fact, studies show that you're no more likely to get oral, throat, or lung cancer than if you did not smoke weed. Lung function also seems to be okay. If anything, weed smoking techniques seem to be able to increase the amount of air you can take in by a tiny, tiny, tiny amount. Hold that head in, come on, do you breathe in? Breathe in more, more, All right, that is cause to light up. Though there is a slight increase in respiratory diseases like bronchitis and chronic cough. Oh, man. Yeah, but you can use a vaporizer or eat baked goods to get around that. Also, you might hold in your hits as long as possible to get a better high, but actually two studies showed that people who did that did not report a greater change in mood than if they had just blown out their hits immediately after smoking it. What bullshit. Nope. All holding that smoke in for a really long time does is probably increase the amount of tar and carbon monoxide in your lungs. The stronger high you're feeling is probably just due to lack of oxygen. So the best thing to do for that feeling is to take the hit, exhale it, and then hold your breath for as long as you <laughs> yeah, can. Yeah, that'll look cool. I'll stick with the tar and carbon monoxide. <laughs> Next up, your brain. First, your motor skills are impaired, so don't drive when you're stoned, though it's not as bad as if you were drunk. Uh, the real big problems with marijuana, though, are decreased learning and memory functions. Oh, really? Because I know some pretty successful stoners. Well, there are some caveats. If you don't smoke that often, you'll have the biggest problems retaining information in the days after you do smoke. So if you have a big test or presentation, it's probably best to uh, refrain from smoking weed till after you're done with all that. Okay, but what if you smoke every day? Well, it actually looks like in regular smokers, your brain somehow compensates for these deficiencies. At first, it looked like regular smokers had a lot of problems with learning and memory, but once you control for IQ, a lot of these problems largely disappear. Which means that some really dumb people smoke a lot of marijuana all the time. Okay, that makes me feel a little better. Does it? Most concerning though is that more and more evidence is mounting that marijuana may lead to certain psychoses like schizophrenia, which is characterized by severe paranoia, hallucination, and delusional and disorganized thought. This is still a controversial claim. It's hard to know if cannabis use actually leads to psychoses or if psychoses lead to cannabis use. But for now, it's beginning to look like if you smoke before the age of 15, you have a greater chance of developing a psychosis when it may not ever develop otherwise. You hear that, kids? Drugs are for adults. You're an amazing role model. Um, at the very least, you should know that your brain doesn't stop developing until you're about your mid-20s. So you should stay away from smoking marijuana as long as possible to avoid irreversible brain problems. At the very least, if you do smoke, you should not make it a habit. Is it easy to become addicted? People do become addicted, though not as easily as with cigarettes, alcohol, cocaine, meth, or heroin. 
and the physical and psychological symptoms aren't as bad. <sighs> so after my third heart attack and you know, along with my uncontrollable depression, you know, not to mention the constant blackouts and bedwetting, <laughs> I thought there's no amount of alcohol, coke, or meth that could ever really truly make me happy, you know? Very powerful. Thank you. Who's next? Uh, Bob. <laughs> yes, right. Um, hi, I uh, smoke a lot of weed. So, you know, I put on a few pounds and uh, at work, you know, I'm not as productive as I think I should be. Yeah, this maybe is not the right. I'm, I'm gonna let myself out. Yeah, sorry, sorry. But because marijuana is one of the most widely used drugs, after alcohol, it's the second most common reason people seek drug abuse treatment. Uh, people will report social isolation and relying on the drug for satisfaction rather than things that are important to them, like relationships or um, career goals. The good news is, though, if you do want to stop, at first you will deal with some withdrawal symptoms, problems with memory, sleep, hunger, irritability, anxiety, but they all pretty much go away in about three weeks. Well, what about the theory that weed is a gateway to harder drugs? Well, it is true that people who have used harder drugs almost certainly have tried marijuana first, but they probably have tried alcohol and cigarettes first too. Uh, there's probably some truth to that idea, um, but only for a small subset of marijuana users. A big majority don't move on to hard drugs at all. Uh, but it's definitely an area that needs a lot more research. All right, anything else? Nope, that's about all the time we have. I'm beginning to bore even myself. So tune in on Friday when we finish up our discussion of marijuana by looking at whether or not it can be considered a medicine. And we'll also tour a cannabis dispensary. Ah, cool! And as always, scienceofsin.com will have a lot more information about marijuana use. And if you haven't seen our first two videos on the wonders of marijuana, you can see them right here. And don't forget to subscribe! Yes. Bye!